In March of 1991, Tina Rollo and her husband Tom put their house in Tarzana, California, up for sale. On the afternoon of March 15th, Tina picked up her five-year-old daughter, Brooke, from school as she did every weekday and returned home to wait with her family for a real estate broker to come by and preview the house. Hi. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Very nice. The girls were running around the house and they were going to get ready and go for a walk in the neighborhood. It was built in 1984. Tom was in the kitchen making lunch for all of us. Okay, Brooke. Brooke, wait a second. Just go out. Tina told Brookie to close the garage door and then go out the front door. Yeah. Don't go out the garage door. <laughs> Brooke loved to take her little sister around the neighborhood with her. It was a gated community, so it was okay. They, they walked around the neighborhood a lot. I'm coming! Wait for me! master bedroom. Oh. I heard the garage door close just as I expected and just proceeded showing her the house. It was probably not a long time, you know, maybe five minutes walking around the house. Um. Mommy! Mommy! And that's the bathroom there. It's got a Jack and Jill bath, so this goes mm -hmm. right through to the next bedroom. Sue and Kim finished previewing the Rollo's house. I think I'll talk to you again soon. I came down, I said thank you and bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Now I went outside, little girls, I understand she's second daughter, she's crying. What's going on? And that time I saw a little blue face, I said, oh my God. Look at the garage door. And I saw Brooke immediately on the ground. She was blue. Her tongue was out. She just, she didn't really look like my daughter. She didn't even look like somebody real. My wife screamed my name as loud as she could. And she went by me like a shot. I am a paramedic. And I've seen a lot of kids in bad shape. But she was the worst thing I've ever seen. She was just, she made me, my stomach drop right through to my knees. This had been drilled into me so much from Tom. In an emergency, your job is this, my job is that. So there was no hesitation in that the next thing I had to do was go get help. I rolled her onto her back and felt right down here at her heart. She had no heartbeat. She was blue, so she had no oxygen going to her body at all. It struck me that she was not going to make it. And as a father, I started to collapse inward, and I started saying, Dear God, please don't let my baby die. Tom, is she breathing? Is she breathing now? No, she's in respiratory arrest. I switched into an automatic mode, and I started treating my daughter as a patient and my wife as my partner, and I was reporting. We have a five-year-old child in full arrest. No heartbeat, no heartbeat. Tom, is she breathing now? Is she breathing? I was very aware that he wasn't able to revive her immediately. That's when it hit me that she she really might not make it, that she that she might die. Life Force 93, Rescue 93, respond, reported injury. Information was relayed to Los Angeles City firefighter paramedic Mike Henley. The kid calls are the worst. They're the ones that keep you up at night. They're the ones you, you remember forever. I hit her in the chest with my fist, which we older paramedics were told to do years ago. No, no breathing. Oh, God. Her heart started again. She's got a heartbeat now. She's not breathing yet, baby. Yeah, I blew two more times in her mouth and nothing. She wouldn't breathe for me. Okay. Rookie, oh, rookie. Breathing. I blew much harder and it popped like a balloon oh, that was stuck together. Tom, is she breathing now? <laughs> she coughed, but then she still wouldn't breathe for me. I blew in her mouth the eighth time and I got a real good smooth chest rise. Oh, rookie. And then she went, and she breathed in. She started flickering her eyes, and she looked past me over my shoulder to my wife, and she started saying, Mommy, Mommy. So I knew she was going to be okay. Talk to me, rookie. Come on, rookie. Oh. I don't know if we could have ever recovered or forgiven ourselves if we hadn't been able to revive her and bring her back. It's all right. Life would have never been the same. 
The rescue unit arrived within three minutes of the call. She's not responding quickly. We don't know how long she's been unconscious. We started the IV in the street. No kid likes needles. She doesn't know why she's laying on the ground, why these big, ugly guys are hanging over her, doing things that hurt. So, Dad, he was able to help us out a lot, keeping her calm, talking to her. At Children's Hospital Los Angeles, five-year-old Brooke Rolla was examined by emergency physician Bethel Steindel Cobb. When she came in, she was alert. She was crying and scared. But other than that, she seemed to be otherwise okay, which was surprising. She's very, very lucky. And if her father hadn't known CPR and she hadn't been resuscitated at the site, she probably wouldn't have made it. Okay, Brooks, let's see if it rolls. That's good. Sure. You gotta roll back. Can I pick it up? A lot of people are not aware of the dangers of garage doors. Even with my husband being a paramedic and being very safety conscious, we weren't aware of the dangers. That's the best one I made. I ripped that old system out and bought a good door opener with an infrared detector on the bottom. I don't care if you have children, you have your cat going out or whatever, you know. That old door is liable to catch somebody, and those doors should be replaced. I'm the mom and you're the real kid, okay? Okay. A neighbor friend of mine ran into the garage door, and she didn't get caught, and that's what gave me the idea. I would tell kids, don't play with garage doors. Just don't play with them. Mom, can I move the beads on a different plate? This I think that book is nice. She helps me at school at lunchtime. She reads to me at snack time. So I like her pretty much. My mom and dad are heroes because they saved me. I think they're even bigger heroes than the presidents for what they did to me.